Greetings from Strasbourg, from the studio in European Parliament. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we are going to talk about the future of food. What kind of food will we eat in future and will we really eat worms? And today I am joined by Esther de Lange, she is MEP from the Netherlands, from the EPP group. Yeah. And also I am joined by Asita Kanko, MEP from Belgium, from Conservative ECR group. Very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. There are a lot of ideas what kind of future food there will be, what kind of sources of new sources of protein. But uh, the basic story is what kind of strange sources of new food will there be? Will we really eat worms at one point in future? And why? <laughs> ah, that's a lot of questions, I think, in, uh, in one go. I think the food sector has always been very innovative, right? For centuries already, they developed new races of, of apples, uh, vegetables, etc. But indeed, now the discussion is, can we produce protein? Uh, maybe in different ways than the traditional uh, animal husbandry way. I ate some of them. Uh, you know, uh, I think I, I ate a worm um, coquette. Uh, and Any good? Any good? Uh, well, actually, the worm croquette I didn't like so much. <laughs> uh, and I had to eat it because I was at a reception for exactly this kind of innovation in agriculture uh, but the grasshopper I quite liked it was rather crunchy uh, so you see as a politician in the European Parliament when you talk about these things you also have to do them mm -hmm. so the debate about innovation and different sources of protein even growing protein in a lab so not needing animals basically to make a steak Dutch universities are working on that that is ongoing still very far in the future, that one, I think. But a discussion that is very close by to us in the European Parliament is the discussion, what do you feed animals? A chicken that is in your backyard will eat a worm every now and then, will eat insects. Until recently, they were not allowed in animal food. We're changing that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the kind of legislation, yes, that the European Parliament does. And we stimulate, of course, the innovation that you were talking uh, about uh, into these novel foods. So what is your take on the future food? Well, I think, thank, thank you for having us. And I think it's an important question to ask because when we eat food now, there is a whole new philosophy uh, about why we eat uh, what we're eating and uh, how we feel about it and this has not always been the case. I have a teenage daughter at home and she's always questioning <laughs> what, we, what we are eating and participating so people are more and more aware of that and uh, what they will not do is, uh, we were, is to say well I'm going to go and, and, f and feed myself some proteins like you could say I'm going to go and charge my phone. Actually you eat also for pleasure to feel, to taste, to share a moment with someone else. So that's going to continue being there. But we need not only in nutrition, but also in just like in other areas of life, to dare and try new things, to, to, to be open to new adventures. I have, I have eaten uh, a lot of insects when I was a kid. Um, not because I decided, look, great, I'm going to eat insects because it's fashionable. It's just because on that day there were insects and there, were, there was nothing else. So you just eat what you find and I did eat them and they were very crunchy. It was in the raining season, we, we caught them with light and it was really, really nice and salty. Uh, but I never so ate... Not in Belgium, I assume. Not in Belgium. And uh, we, we, we were talking that we we're going to try uh, and eat uh, some insect to see how it uh, tastes in Belgium. but. People worry also about health uh, issues, but uh, we know that these can be healthy, are healthy if it's produced the right way. So I think there is a work on information to do. I think people are increasingly in Belgium, like more than, than about 15% people are vegetarians or open to this kind of, of new food. We just must be careful not to go to a position where we are looking at those who don't dare as people who are not uh, with the time for the moment because it will feel people reject what, what is compulsory. And I think I would encourage everyone to be kind of flexitarian. I eat a lot of vegan food and I also eat meat and I also eat vegetarian food and all is really tasty. I think that's maybe the new, a new way of approaching uh, things and also looking at what uh, the European food, uh, food Security Authority is going to, to continue saying so that people don't worry ab about that. But we will need to feed everyone or have less kids. 
<laughs> but what is the reasoning uh, reasoning behind this uh, new food? Is it just to be innovative and offer something exotic? Or there is actually economical sort of uh, reasoning why we are talking about the new food? Well, I think the reason is uh, Asita's last sentence. We, we, you know, the world, every human being in the world in an ideal situation is being fed, yes. has enough to eat. Unfortunately, that is not the case yet. Um, uh, yet in, the, in, in places like um, Europe, uh, the United States, there are more people, um, you know, more and more people uh, with uh, problems with overweight, being overweight, etc. So... Um, it's about not wasting resources, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. I think that is very yeah. important. In the food chain we still waste a lot um, and we shouldn't. If we want to eat responsibly, uh, we need to make sure that um, we start using what is there what is nearby, of course you need to import, of course you also want to export, um, but we should do it in such a way that we don't waste food. And in the discussion about the climate, finding ways of, for example, um, producing protein, even like meat in a way that is less harmful for the planet, that's the kind of innovation that we need. But there is a hold on EU level, do you see there is strong push? to produce protein in new ways? Enough support mm, for that? Well, I think um, we should not forget that when I look at Europe, the most important thing is that food is part of our European way of life. So when I listen to Europeans just out in the street, it's like Asita said, they are not really bothered about the novel foods and innovation. They are thinking about especially now after Corona, you know, am I allowed to go into a restaurant again and share a good meal uh, with my friends or with my family? And I think that's a European way of life that we need to cherish. You know, the idea like in America that you just go through the drive through nearly every day or have a microwave meal. Please, let's not go there in Europe. So let's cherish the culture that we have. The debate about um, how to produce new types of food, I think is very different in different member states. I mean, I come from a, from a country where farmers have always been highly innovative. Um, so in the Netherlands, it's a big debate. In other countries, they are much more cherishing the tradition, I would say. So the, the balance between tradition and new is different. It's my feeling. I don't know how you feel it in Belgium. I, I, I think the, the, we see a lot of militantism. Uh, about uh, what kind of food people should eat. And I strongly believe that people should choose what they want to eat. We just need to inform them enough about uh, the, the point, what you're making, what you're doing to yourself, what you're doing to the planet, what you're doing to your own health. And uh, if you're sitting alone every day somewhere, eating something very fast at your desk, it's also not healthy at all. Uh, and I, I agree. What we sometimes yeah, do too yeah, much. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I, I think it's good to just take a moment and, and really enjoy. I mean, French actually, when I was a kid and, and learned that French, I was in Africa growing up and learned somewhere that French people ate frogs and that it was also, you also had to pay for it. I was very shocked because you could just find a frog in the river and then <laughs> near my house and we didn't want to eat it. So <laughs> this is completely, thought it was a joke. But in fact, if they did eat that someday, we could eat plenty of other things. And I also think that when we are promoting this kind of new food, we need to not forget what are the causes of the reason why we need this. And we need to have an holistic approach of that and not start uh, taxing meat more, for example, because people eat what they need. Sometimes I can feel the need to eat. You know, everyone can recognize that. You can feel the need, like your body will tell you what you need. And if you have a certain type of vitamins not in your blood, you will maybe feel the urge to eat some meat or to eat some other kind of vegetables. So it is, people don't taste the same. If you give uh, kids uh, candy in, in Brussels, they will find it sweet. If you go to Japan and give it to, this, to other kids that are the same age, they might not find it sweet. So it's a matter of taste. The tastes are different. It, yeah. The tastes are yeah, different. True. So you cannot discuss about tastes and colors. And, <laughs> at, and at last, last point I would like to make is also that it's, we should not underestimate how difficult it is to even cook re, uh, mainstream food for yourself. Uh, if you need to cook very special, so on, honestly, I have cookbooks at home. If I go to the shop to buy ingredients, 
I usually don't even know what the ingredients are and I don't find, don't find them, so I just use part of it. It's very, very difficult. It's even more difficult to cook some type of new food. So we've learned in research that what is preventing Belgians to go to cross the bridge and start eating uh, innovative food is because they even don't know how to cook it. And then they're like, okay, that's too complicated. So maybe we need to go to some kind of, that's very dangerous or, or very challenging what I'm going to say, like vegan fast food. <laughs> Ah, just to learn to how <laughs> like to, yeah, to get accustomed get to, to the uh, taste. Yeah. But what you are saying also, it, it's, it, it means that uh, people are very, Europeans are very conservative when they come exactly. when it comes to the food, right? Yes. So this new food, it will have a hard time to get on our sort of daily daily diets, daily menus, right? It's it's something that As our generation might not even accept. Maybe that's your true. daughter will say, well, that's cool, that's, that's trendy, <laughs> that's, that's hipster, right? I, and I she will she eat will. that day. I the think like, like uh, uh, as I just said also in the Netherlands, people are very, very open. They are very open to more even than, than, than just food. But in, uh, in Flanders, we may just be uh, more open as well than Wallonia. So it will depend on the culture uh, and of where you are, how you're going, you're going to do it. And also of the type of social interactions that you have around food. If your preferred one is the sun shining and the barbecue, it's going to be different than people who are chilling in front of Netflix at a, a certain moment. So it will have an impact on, on, on how you're doing this. If you are in a Scandinavian country and you are more like doing something in a very reduced uh, circle, it will also have an impact on that. But uh, we, we need to take the member states approach into this and not just do only a European thing. We, we need to be like the, the, uh, the kind of umbrella to, to help mm. uh, go into that direction and start this conversation. But we need to recognize the individuality of every member state and even region to figure out for, your, for themselves how to do it and speak in schools. And indeed, my daughter will say, cool, except when it's insects. But for the rest, she, she, likes all, she likes all the rest and she, we eat kind of vegan like every Friday or pizza, but vegan for me, pizza for her. But she kind will not be open to go and taste some, um, uh, some insects, I think. What we definitely need to do is not to stop this innova innovation, right? Of course, with innovation, it's always a small group that starts. Yeah, sure, that's logical, uh, right? And not everything becomes mainstream. Uh, but uh, it, in the food sector and in other sectors, what I find important mm. in the European uh, Union, and I think ACITA's group uh, and the EPP are very close there, is that uh, we should stimulate as far as possible innovation, whether that is in high tech or in food, because by thinking about new things, you know, you always get ideas that maybe you didn't think about uh, before. And I'm a bit worried there because we have a lot of legislation that is very uh, old about the techniques that you are allowed to use yeah. when you're developing new foods. Um, and we don't seem to be able to update this legislation uh, because the, the European Parliament is very divided uh, between, between those who say, oh, nothing new in the area of food and those who say, no, we should be able to innovate also without putting a patent on something new immediately, yeah. right? You should just have the freedom to develop uh, new fruits and vegetables. Um, but we have work to do because uh, the legislation is old and until now we haven't managed to update it. If I can pick on that, I would like to say also I totally agree with you on this. And the, the challenge is also that we usually have the conversations only inside the parliament and we need to go down and speak to the farmers. You know, because what is going to happen to the farmers when all the food is developed in a lab? In a lab, that's what they are wondering about. What's going to happen to them? And right now, farmers already have a difficult life, and especially female farmers, they're all forgotten. I don't know, usually when you imagine a farmer, you maybe see a guy, that's what a lot of women in farming feel, that they're forgotten. And it's going to be even more difficult. So we need to join, to have them join the conversation and, and, and show that this is not a development innovation against farming or how can we together do something that is good for everyone i think that is lacking this constituency chat thank you so much for <laughs> joining in, in this debate and uh, as we we discussed so there's economical reasoning why we talk about the new food there are a lot of challenges one of the challenge of course is how farmers will deal with it and other challenges how we will make this new food more attractive for people how we'll make it cool and maybe also uh, stylish. So thank you for joining us. Bye.
So now Esther and I am going, we are going to taste the worms, right? <laughs> <laughs> the worms I didn't like. But it was very...